Today we're going to be trying to solve the face turning octahedron. So essentially it's in the shape of an octahedron with eight different faces and colors. Um, their basic structure is 12 edges, which are these pieces with two different colors on them. So there are 12 of those on this entire cube puzzle. And then, of course, eight faces, um, six corners, so these with four different colors on them, and then 12 center pieces, which look like these with only one color on them. So for basic syntax, since this is pretty much um, quite a bit different from a cube shape, we need to have uh, different letter representations of the faces. Um, so you hold it like so. Um, where this is up, you, and this is front, this is right, and this is left. And when we refer to different um, edges, we use a combination of the face orientations that the edge is on or the corner. So for example, uh, this edge would be the front right edge, and this edge would be front left. Um, and then also for the corners, it would be um, the intersection between this face and this face, uh, which would be up right. And this one would be up left. So let's get started here. All right, so the first step in this entire process is to solve all of the edges. Um, so first of all, we just have to start pick a face to start off with um, and then just go on from there. So, for example, we can base this uh, gray surface to start off, um, just because there's quite a few gray pieces here, that's just um, by coincidence. And then you can choose, uh, basically, to see, you can look around all the pieces and then see which colors um, are offshoots from the gray face. So right here you can see that there's a red face and a blue face, and then looking around there's a yellow face here. So let's first turn the yellow face up towards these other two pieces. Just get it into this layer here, and then we can twist it up, and then the gray pieces are still here, and then this one's over here. So now it's in this orbit for this side and then we can get it up to see all three of these. We're actually not sure right now that these are in the correct orientation because um, there might not be corner pieces where, which put red and blue uh, next to each other like so. So for example, we would need to find um, these corner pieces which show that while the gray is on top, we can have blue on this side and also yellow on this side. So that's a good sign. Um, that we have both of these correct, and by de facto, the red. But just in case, we can just look at this. So the gray is here, and then in order to get the gray to face upright, we can just twist this right edge here. And you can see that the blue and the red match up here, and then once we get the final corner here, we can see that the red and yellow match up as well. However, um, we actually have to leave the corner pieces for now because uh, in order to complete the rest of the edge pieces, we need to do those first, um, inconsequential of where the corner pieces are as of yet now. So now we can see that um, according to this corner piece, it's gray, red, blue, and then white down here. So this edge piece is actually in the wrong orientation. Because even though it's red here, um, this is green instead of white. Um, so we want this piece to come over here, and then this piece would then naturally belong here. So 
One way we can do this is basically just getting um, this piece down to the bottom layer and then transferring it over here. So how do we get this down to the bottom layer without affecting any of these? Um, that's actually relatively easy because we can just twist whichever surface it's down here. And since it's three-sided, getting it here and then turning it once will get it into this position. And then all we're affecting is the corner if we turn this down. And since the corners, we don't have to worry about them right now, only keeping the edges in place and see this blue edge is back in place. We can just do that sequence and it brings down the white red piece here. So now we can essentially uh, just bring this piece around and then see how we can get it up here. All we have to do is turn this piece, this side up. So once this is here and red is on the bottom, then just turning this once will get the red to face here and the white to face here, which is what we want. And since the corners can move around, uh, all you have to do is just put this one, slide over, and then you're all set. So now we can keep going by taking this edge down to the bottom layer using the same method. And so now red green is down here. So then we can twist it here and since red is on the bottom and we want it to be here, we can just twist this face up once. And now all of the reds are in place. So now we want to see where the yellow green is and that is right here so same thing we can turn this down to the bottom layer by doing this and then twisting over on the bottom layer so now yellow green is here And then if we try to do this, this brings yellow up and green here. However, this takes this out of play. So that's not good. Um, so instead, what we want to do is take this over without disturbing this. So instead of twisting this entire face and taking this piece with it, we can twist this space down and then fill it. So for example, we can turn this down and then pull this over so that the green matches it and then twist it back up. So the yellow green is now matched. Next up is the So we look for the blue, yellow, gray corner first and then see what is missing. So that's orange. So we want the yellow orange corner here. Um, since this blue orange corner is, uh, edge is already in place, we again need to not just do this because it would twist the blue orange out of place. So we take it over a notch on the bottom layer and then twist the placement down replace it with the orange yellow and twist it back up so now we have a final edge piece in the middle layer uh, that would be blue white and that is down here So we can twist this placement down, replace it 
with the white blue and then twist it back. So now all of the middle edges are complete as well. And then the bottom edges, um, they would already be in place relative to each other, so you would just have to twist the bottom layer until the edges are all matched up. And there you have it. We have solved all of the edge pieces.